Money can buy you just about anything, anything that is, except for time. Hi everyone, Ken here. Today we're traveling back to the height of Pasadena's Millionaire's Row to uncover the story of one lady who just couldn't wait any longer. Hit that subscribe button and let's explore this house. In 1849, Eva Scott was born in New York City as the cherished and only child of Leonard and Rebecca Scott. Growing up in a wealthy family afforded her the opportunity to attend Pelham Priory School, New York's first all-girls preparatory school, where she kindled her artistic talents. In the late 1860s, she traveled to Europe and Egypt, studying not only architecture, but also art under a renowned painter Sanford R. Gifford. Eva's first marriage to Lt. William S. Mews in 1878 brought her daughter Lenora into the world. However, the union dissolved in 1889. Six years later, she found herself on a second serendipitous trip to Egypt where she met Hungarian nobleman Dr. Edelbert Fenyesh, a distinguished neurologist and a pioneer in X-ray technology. The couple married in Budapest one year later before making their way to Pasadena, California. Dr. Edelbert Fenyesh had been born in 1863 in Hungary as a man of many talents. Educated at the University of Vienna and serving in the court of Franz Joseph, his medical career spanned across continents, bringing us back to Pasadena, where he introduced revolutionary X-ray technology to California. Beyond medicine, Edelbert was an avid entomologist and horticulturist, known for his extensive collection of insect specimens and the cultivation of new flower varieties. Upon their arrival in Pasadena, Eva envisioned a home that would reflect her love for Moorish architecture, inspired by her travels in Tunisia, Algeria, and Egypt. In 1896, she acquired two lots on South Orange Grove Avenue, known then as Pasadena's Millionaire's Row, and engaged the architectural firm of Dennis and Farwell to bring her vision to life. Lyman Farwell, a seasoned traveler of Islamic countries, collaborated closely with Eva, translating her sketches and ideas into breathtaking reality. Construction on the mansion, named Algerian Court, began in June of 1897, resulting in a mansion that showcased arched windows, spired domes, and vibrant tile work. Each of the mansion's 30 rooms featured distinct themes from Louis XV to American colonial. However, it was the Algerian court that stood out, a space of soaring beauty adorned with intricate tiles, stucco cornices, and Turkish lamps. An opalescent and meridian glass dome by the Colonial Art Glass Company bathed the middle hall in ethereal light, creating a magical ambience that captivated all who entered. Despite the mansion's grandeur, the Fenish family resided there for only seven years before Eva sold it in 1904. After selling their Moorish villa, the Fenish family commissioned architect Robert T. Farquhar in 1905 to design a new residence on the same prestigious avenue. Farquhar, an architect with impeccable credentials from Harvard and L'École des Beaux-Arts in Paris, delivered a two-story Beaux-Arts masterpiece that embodied grandeur and sophistication. The mansion's design was an eclectic blend, reflecting a quote-unquote Italian villa with a decidedly French feeling, according to architectural historian Robert Winter. The mansion's exterior, with its neoclassical elements, stood as a striking contrast to the Victorian houses that populated the neighborhood. The interiors, however, retained a Victorian charm tailored meticulously to Eva's specifications. Eva and Adelbert's new home was more than just a residence, it was a sanctuary for their diverse interests. The grand estate included a conservatory, a studio, and a laboratory, spaces that facilitated Eva's artistic endeavors and Adelbert's scientific pursuits. The mansion's luxurious interiors were adorned with exquisite furniture, ornate mantles, and lavish table settings that reflected Eva's refined taste. Eva, a patron of the arts, transformed her double-height studio into a cultural salon where artists, journalists, and creative minds gathered. The studio, designed with elegance, was a space where Eva's artistic spirit thrived. Despite not being a professional artist, Eva's watercolors captured the landscapes and architecture of the American Southwest, preserving a unique visual history and playing an important role in her future. After many years of devoting herself to art and traveling around the American Southwest to capture scenes of missions and adobe structures, she decided to immerse herself completely in her passion. In 1926, Eva, along with her daughter and granddaughter, left Pasadena for Santa Fe, New Mexico, leaving behind their lavish lifestyle to focus on art. Eva enjoyed her twilight years, paintbrush in hand, until her passing at 80 years old in 1930. Her husband, who was 14 years younger than her, went on to remarry, but as for their properties, Algerian court subsequent owner Frank H. Hamilton tragically and intentionally set the mansion ablaze for insurance money in 1915. Fortunately, the Fenish estate, as it is known, became the home of the Pasadena Museum of History and has been well preserved for the public's enjoyment. Eva's Asiquero Madre House in New Mexico continues to function as a collaborative environment, currently serving as the Women's International Studies Center where thousands of paintings and photographs are not only archived but preserved with care. 
Eva's artistic legacy endures through her watercolor landscapes housed not just here, but in museums all across the United States. What did you think about her homes? Would you trade a lavish lifestyle if it meant you could pursue your hobbies 24-7? Let me know down below in the comments section, and while you're there, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.